she looks half as good as this photo, I'd say she was a real beauty. So was Mata Hari. Oh, I didn't know you were handling this as a spy case. I'm not. She's a naturalized citizen. If we can get an indictment, it'll be for treason. And right this minute, I think we can. Too bad. She has such a pretty neck. Yes, Miss North? They're here, Mr. Hagen. All right, bring them in. Miss Brenner, sir. How do you do, Miss Brenner? How do you do? Hagen is my name. This is Mr. Rogers, my assistant. How do you do? Would you two gentlemen wait outside, please? Would you step this way? Miss Brenner, do you understand the meaning of treason? Yes, I do. Although this is but a preliminary hearing, I must warn you that anything you say here may be used against you should you be indicted and placed on trial for committing treason against the United States of America. I will tell the truth. Would you care to make a statement? Yes, I would. Go ahead. Go ahead, please. Yes. I know what treason is. And I also know the meaning of loneliness. You think of loneliness. You go down to the sea. You listen to the sound of the waves. And you look out at the ocean. And you remember that it separates you from the land where you were born the home you made there when you were married. You turn away and walk on, looking for nothing, no one. Until unexpectedly, out of nowhere, there seems to appear a clam digger. Butch, Butch, I'm so sorry. Please throw the ball and he'll stop bothering you. Thank you. Thank you, Fabana. How did you know my name? I've been haunting this beach for the last two days, waiting for a chance to speak to you alone. To me? Why? I have a message for you. A message? From whom? From the same person who gave me your name. Your husband. My husband? That's a very poor joke. My husband died five years ago. It is less than 48 hours since he gave me this message for you. You must be out of your mind. My husband was lost at sea with the entire crew of his boat, the U-64. Your husband is well and aboard his boat. The U-64 was never sunk. He sent you this. He carries it with him always. It can't be. The picture, it's true. He always had it with him. Where is he? Why didn't he come himself? Where can I find him? It won't be easy. You must go to him. There's a great risk involved. Oh, I'll do anything, anything. You and Powell can start a new life together, if you have the courage. You will be aboard the Weber yacht tomorrow, when Mrs. Weber takes Dr. Gurnitz for a cruise, won't you? Yes, and... Now listen carefully, because this is what I want you to do. Once more. I understood my instructions quite well. But I couldn't think of right and wrong when I walked back to the beach house. All I could think of were the minutes and the hours separating me from tomorrow. And the wonderful moment of reunion. It's Madeline. Well, how long did you have fun by the water? Well, dear, you were gone a long time. I was beginning to work. Was I? I, I didn't realize. I, I met a clam digger down the beach. How about some clam broth for supper, Dr. Gurnitz? Ever since I came to this wonderful country, that is a native delicacy of which I've heard. I've never tried. The hospital evidently did not approve of clam broth as patients died. Well, it's high time you sampled it, Doctor. And if there's one thing a Cape Cod cook knows how to prepare, it's clams. Madeline, dear. Yes? Why don't you take them out to our tyrant in the kitchen? I will. 
Butch, come on. You know, it is not good that a charming young girl like your secretary should always be alone. She never talks to anybody. To have a little dog as her only companion, that's no way to live. My plane is leaving for Washington a half hour, Ms. Weber. But I do want to thank you again for your kindness to Dr. Gurnitz. I know how much the Admiral appreciates it. Appreciates indeed. You tell Bob Farrell any time he can't call on me for a favor, I'll be in my grave, or he'll be in his. He may be Bob Farrell to you, Mrs. Weber, but he's still the Admiral to me. I think you better deliver that sort of message in person. I shall, as soon as we get back from our cruise. You're very kind. Your government not only put me in good hands, but also in charming ones. You can see how much better he is. He's starting to act flirtatious. <laughs> Well, I shall see you in Washington, Doctor, after your cruise. I don't have to tell you how much we need you or what your work will mean to us. It'll mean much to me too, Captain. Four years is too long a time to waste in a hospital when one is my age. There are not enough years left for all I hope to do. Then tomorrow comes after a long night without sleep. On board the yacht, you listen to the wild pounding of your heart as you search the sea. When I heard the radio signal, I knew the time was close. Very close. Excuse me. Yes, an SOS. It was a faint signal. An SOS. The Melinda. Keep contact. Tell them we're on our way. Yes, sir. Submarine! Surfacing! Fourth quarter! Markings, Captain. No. Is it one of ours? I don't know. Radio the Coast Guard that there's another identified subsurfacing. Give them our position. Yes, sir. Harm anyone. I wish I could believe that. Malibu, comply immediately or we will open fire. You see the U 64, and you thank God it was never sunk. And you thank God for sparing your husband. Then you look and see your faces. And faces. But not the face your heart is breaking for. The only one I recognized was the clam digger. You. Super fail, Barbara. But I. Into the boat, please. Please, we have very little time. Take her across with the boat and then come back. Out. 
Out! I want everybody below decks. Captain, you will assist me, please. Quickly. All right, men, get below decks. Mrs. Webern, folks, let's go to the cabin. Oh, Dr. Gernitz. Yes? You, of course, will come with me. We will try to make you as comfortable as possible. To the boat, please. Where is Paul? Where is he? You promised he'd be here. You are quite correct, Frau Brenner. Your husband did die five years ago. In the service of his country. But why did you want me to believe that he was still alive? Why did you bring me here? Dr. Kernitz. They used you. But it was I they wanted. So you lied to me. You lied, you... My men and I serve no purpose but our own and those of the highest bidder. Every man's hand is against us. We have no flag and no country. You should be grateful for giving us Gernitz. You will escape the fate of those others. Captain, they've broken out. They're getting in the way. All ahead, two thirds. Make ready number one torpedo tube. Number one tube's ready, Captain. On target. Stand by forward. They are helpless. You can't do such a thing. Butcher. You butcher. Fire them. Sound the diving alarm. Heinz. Yes, Captain. Take Dr. Gernitz to my cabin. Green air. Green board pressure in the boat. Come on. I'm sorry, Frau Brenner. But it is essential to my plan that she be reported as sunk without a trace. Your husband knew what it was like to be hunted. And now, unfortunately, you will, too. I know it will be difficult to accept, but soon you will realize that we are your only friends. I was sick with hate. I hated von Malter. A heartless liar, a cold-blood butcher. But I hated myself more for having believed him, having helped him, blindly, stupidly. Excuse me. Yes? The two gentlemen are here, Mr. Hagen. All right, thank you. Miss Brenner, would you wait in Mr. Rogers' office, please? This way, Miss Brenner. Come in, gentlemen. I'm Captain Elliot, Captain. This is Dr. Young. How do you do, Doctor? Hello. This is Mr. Rogers, my assistant. How, How do you do? Doctor? Mr. Rogers. I appreciate your coming. Would you sit down, please? Thank you. Uh, Captain Elliot, you met Miss Brenner at the Mrs. Weber's beach house, did you not? Yes, sir, I did. Uh, tell me, Captain, in view of Dr. Gernitz's presence there, was any security check made on the household personnel? There was. What did you learn about Miss Brenner? Nothing, sir. Nothing that would warrant any action on the part of naval intelligence. What was your personal opinion of her? I have no personal opinion. I can tell you, however, that both Dr. Gernitz and Mrs. Weber thought highly of her. Mm-hmm. I understand, Captain, you were involved in the search for the U-64. In a minor way, I was. How was that? I managed to obtain a piece of wreckage from the yacht. I went to Washington, turned the evidence over to the Naval Gun Factory for examination. Then you infer, Admiral, the yacht was not sunk by an internal explosion. Definitely not. 
This piece of wreckage from the Malibu has told us quite a lot. The spectroscopic analysis of the steel led us to a conclusion that at first seemed unbelievable. But ballistics confirmed it, so did metallurgy. The steel is definitely from Stuttgart. There's no question about it. That's a propeller from a German Mark VI torpedo. I know it's difficult to believe, but the facts speak for themselves. The Malibu was destroyed by a torpedo from a German Type 21 submarine. Then Gernitz might still be alive. That's ONI's theory, Admiral. We're not the only ones who can use his genius. But a U-boat has no country. Money always has a country, sir. Yes, yes. Quite so. You said that naval intelligence had certain facts which might narrow the possible area to be searched. Yes, sir. Two ships, their crews, and their supplies have disappeared without a trace during the past week at these two points. More significant, we have just received a report that last night in the harbor of Belgrana, on the north coast of South America, three crewmen were killed on board an oil tanker. An oil tanker? Yes. 6,000 gallons of diesel oil have disappeared. Well, we have sufficient ships and planes in that area for an intensive offshore search without violating neutral waters. There are 1,500 miles of rugged, sparsely settled coastline in that vicinity. That means thousands of inaccessible hiding places, any one of which might be their base. And your solution? Naval intelligence has picked men ready to find comb that coastline, each working separately. We're only awaiting your permission, sir. Thank you, Captain. Permission was granted, and I then flew to San Diego to contact a man who played such a major role in the U-64 matter. Dr. Young. In San Diego, you're home, Doctor? Well, since the war, it has been. I'm practicing medicine there. Between escapades for the Navy, of course. Well, I'm a sucker for a worthy cause. Are you a family man? Unfortunately, no. I'm still a bachelor. Uh, tell me, Doctor, why were you chosen for the job? Well, I speak German and know a little about submarines. Dr. Young studied medicine in Leipzig. During the war, he served with a submarine squadron in the Pacific Fleet. I see. Tell me, Doctor, what is your opinion of Miss Brenner? Concerning what? Treason. If you don't mind, I'll leave legal opinions to lawyers like yourself. I'll stick to the facts. As you wish, Doctor. Go ahead with your, your facts. Well, after Captain Elliot persuaded me to take the assignment, I left for South America. Locating the whereabouts of the U-64 wasn't easy. At least it wasn't for me. It took time. Too many blind alleys and too many false leads. I'd been sailing along the coastline about 200 miles south of Belgrana, searching plantations owned by German expatriates. Finally, I spotted a cove where a submarine could possibly find shelter and camouflage. I'd run into several like it before, but I wasn't at all sure I'd found the rendezvous of the U-64. Lieutenant! There's a man in a small boat off the coast. How close? About a quarter of a mile. I'll call the captain. his course and comes any closer. Bring him in. Understand? Some more coffee. Thank you, yes. You too have one, Malter? Oh, no. The lady asked if you wish for some more coffee. I must apologize for my brother's rudeness. Our presence here seems to have complicated his rather simple farm existence. Being an uninvited guest myself, I, I can quite understand his feelings. Ah, Carla. I hope your shopping expedition was fruitful. I'm afraid the shops in Aliso are not up to Senora Brenner's standard. I'm sure I like it. It was kind of your wife to take so much trouble for me, Herr von Malta.
It is so difficult for one woman to shop for another. I, I wish I could have done it myself. That would have been too dangerous. Carla has done everything for us since our arrival. The stranger in town would be noticed immediately. Very nice, Carla. Just native peasant styles, but I am sure they will look nice on you. Uh, yes. Please come with me right away. Excuse me. I thought perhaps this skirt. Hmm? And I want to know what this is all about. These men grabbed me. And... Acted under my orders. And who are you? Well, he was headed straight for the wharf, sir. What did you want? Fresh water. My tank was slow. You searched the boat? Yes, sir. His papers? None, sir. Not even any charts. Nothing but food and fuel. No papers, eh? Where were you bound for? That's no concern of yours. Search him. Let me see that. Nothing, sir. It's cap. Reservoir escapes. Lieutenant Karl Lundberg, former medical officer of the German submarine service. Escaped from Huntsville, Texas, prisoner of war camp. Authorities believe he will head for Mexico. The international border has been closely watched. Very interesting. What is here, Laser, right now, Lundberg? I don't know what we're talking about. Don't you? I'm listed here in German Navy personnel. You're among friends, Lieutenant. Really? Who says so? Shaft in the house. And there she's team. You're mad. You can't shoot me. What have I done? I thought you didn't speak German, Lieutenant. Well, it is good to have you with us. My name is Eric von Motor. Von Motor? Of the U-64. Mm -hmm. Impossible. The U-64 was lost. The U-64, Lieutenant, is just as alive as I am. Now, it states here that you're from Essen. I know the town intimately. Just for my satisfaction, where's the Lutheran Church? On the Marienplatz. Have you ever dined at Wagenheim's? Hardly. I never read first editions. It's a bookshop. <laughs> Good enough, Lieutenant. You have come at a very convenient moment. We are urgently in need of a doctor. At your service, Captain. Now, if you will accompany Lieutenant Heldman, my second in command. Herr Freud. Sehr Freud. We have a patient here. The captain believes he has suffered a relapse from a former condition. He has been getting sedatives. But I have nothing to work with. You'll find a first aid kit in the room. This is Lieutenant Lundburg, Dr. Görnitz. The captain will expect a report from you later, Doctor. If you need anything else, let me know. that kid and make me well. I hope to. You undoubtedly studied in Leipzig, the world's finest medicine. Yes, you know the human body well. Except for this, the heart. I studied that too. I doubt if it'll do you any good, Lieutenant. Won't you join me? Thank you, no. Why not? This warm climate is right. Yes, it is also oppressive. One requires time to become accustomed to it. Do you suppose Dr. Gurnitz ever will? Now that we have a competent doctor, I trust so. You know, I wish that you and I could have met under happier circumstances. You see, Madeline, uh, you permit that I call you Madeline. I have small choice in the matter. I would prefer that your permission came from a feeling of friendship rather than from a mistaken feeling of duress. As long as Dr. Gurnitz and I remain your prisoners, Captain, you can hardly expect us to feel friendly toward our jailer. 
as far as Dr. Kermis is concerned. That is a regrettable result of his scientific eminence. But in your case, my dear, you are as free as I. Unfortunately, our freedom is circumscribed by the fact that we must remain hidden here for the present. But the future holds promise. Oh, Lieutenant, I see after taking care of your patient, you've taken care of yourself. Oh, I needed it. Frau Brenner, may I present Lieutenant Lundberg, formerly of the German Navy? Not only a distinguished doctor, but twice decorated for extreme bravery under fire. Frau Brenner, I'm honored. And Dr. Gernitz? I've given him temporary relief, sir, but I'm not at all satisfied with his condition. I have a blood count on the vein now. By tomorrow morning, I should be able to give you a full report. Thank you, Lieutenant. I am greatly relieved, my dear, that Dr. Gernitz is in such capable hands. Let me know your diagnosis as soon as you can. Well, we shall look forward to seeing you at dinner. Well, thank you, sir. Pop in. Now, as I was saying, the future holds great promise for all of us. Us? Why do you include me in your plans? For many reasons, my dear. You must realize these last few days that my interest in you is no longer merely that of a person whom I had to use. As a woman, you must have sensed it. And it is as a woman I now regard you. A very charming, very beautiful, and very desirable woman. Of all your mad schemes, this is the maddest. Do you really think that you can force affection? I would so not inspire it. And you choose a singular method. You think you hate me now. But in a woman's heart, the dividing line between love and hatred is almost indistinguishable. I shall be leaving here soon, Madeline, never to return. You can come with me willingly or by force. The first choice will, I assure you, make things much more pleasant for both of us. Once we have delivered Dr. Gionis to his purchases, we can forget the U-64 and the past. You and I can go where we will, live as we wish. You can have everything your heart desires. Everything any woman could wish for. Have no doubts, Madeline, that you will learn to love me. Another message. Good. This completes the picture. Latitude 45 degrees, 55 minutes north. Forty-five. Fifty-five. Longitude 32 degrees, 15 minutes west. Thirty-two. It should be a simple matter to deliver Dr. Gernitz aboard the Citadel on its regularly scheduled run. I want you to get all these supplies aboard as quickly as possible. I mean everyone. Now I have an announcement that I know will please you all. Especially our reluctant host. We'll be leaving you shortly. Meine Damen und Herren. To our successful voyage. Drink up, Lieutenant. You will be leaving with us. 
You'll have two days in which to prepare Dr. Gurnitz for our trip. I will do everything I can for him, sir. And you, my dear, will have two days in which to decide. Everything is in order, Captain. Thank you. It must feel good to step aboard a U-boat again. Yes. It's been a long time. This way, please. Is forward. My boat has quite a record, hasn't she? Mm -hmm. She's the first of her class. Admiral Dunnett himself commissioned her. Come along, Lieutenant. I think you will find everything you need. We are quite well equipped, as you can see. Oh, and here is the oxygen cylinder. Captain! Seaplane, all floor, flying at low altitude. Go ahead. for news of the outside world. I finally decommissioned the radio. Unless I'm using it myself, of course. You're very wise, Captain. No, just cautious. You should be, too. Cautious? Yes. About your patient, I mean. If anything should happen to him, we will have no further need for your services, will we? I understand. Now, if you've got all your supplies, we will be leaving. After you. to escape later tonight. I'll make my way to town. I'll get the police. Oh, the American consulate, there is one. Yes, I've got to. It's all my fault that you're here. But I'll try to make up for it if it's not too late. Don't blame yourself, child. They trapped you the way they trapped me. But if you can get through, we both shall be free.
running away, hmm? Tired of the captain. Please, please, my arm! The captain doesn't have to know you tried to escape. I can keep a secret if you're nice to me. I mean, real nice. I hate this place. It's so lonely. I'm sick of being alone. Back home, I had my family, but here nobody cares whether I live or die. I need somebody to care. I want you to care. Here, son. I want you to care. Stop it! Stop it, please! Not long. The captain wouldn't appreciate this incident. You'd better leave. I was only trying to stop her from escaping. I was. I suppose you'll save him that trouble. Why should I? You wouldn't be fool enough to try it again. Because you tell the captain? No, because you'd be shot by the guards if you tried. Why oh, didn't you know? But Carla, she said. Be careful whose advice you take. You could be killed that way. Why should you care? I don't. I wouldn't want the captain to lose you so easily. He's quite fond of you. But you're desperate. He tells me you're responsible for bringing Dr. Gunnitz here. You didn't expect Von Motor to be part of the bargain, did you? Compared to you, Heldman is almost human. Perhaps I shouldn't have interrupted the two of you. something on your mind? Last night, you said my welfare depended on Dr. Gunnitz. And please, my advice made such an impression on you. It impressed me so much, I don't want my life depending on these drugs. Good morning. Good morning, my dear. Help us up to some breakfast. Now, about this medicine, you were saying... We can discuss it later, if you wish. You can talk freely. What is it? The date, 1947. It's lost its effectiveness. Most of the other bottles are the same. Can't you manage without it? Not if my life depends on it. You should have told me this immediately instead of waiting till your own life was concerned. I only noticed the date this morning. That might be a fatal mistake. We have so little time. We must sail by tomorrow night. There's a hospital at Belgrana. They'd have what we need. It's only about 200 miles from here. Belgrana? That's a possibility. The coast road is fairly good over there. If you sent me down, I'd be back in plenty of time. You're very resourceful, Lieutenant. Wait here. I'll make the necessary arrangements. Take me with you. Because you want to get away from... from Malta? What difference is it to you? But you've got to take me. You've got to. Impossible. Sir, good. The arrangements are all completed. When do I leave? In a few hours. Well, I'm ready now. Unfortunately, I'm not. You're surprised, Lieutenant? But I thought... You were wrong. We are all leaving together today, 24 hours ahead of schedule. We can go ashore at Belgrana and pick up your supplies. That will be a much more practical plan, don't you agree? You're giving the orders, sir. That leaves us exactly three hours and 20 minutes in which to prepare for our voyage.
Periscope. Captain, I've had Dr. Kearney's place in my cabin. I will use yours. Yes, Captain. Yes, it's weak. It'll grow weaker. You'll never profit by my knowledge. If I don't have the will to live, you cannot make me live. You have nothing to sell but dust. Dr. Gurnitz, listen to me. I'm not Lieutenant Lundberg. I'm an American. I'm here to help you. you expect me to believe that? It's just a trick of the captains to keep me alive. But Von Mulder... Von Mulder couldn't possibly know that you were in room 417, but there's the hospital. And the three specialists, Peterson, Marks, and Caldwell, were on your case, but that your blood type was ABRH negative. That's true, but... I do not understand. I've just decoded a message from the Citadel. They've left port. Confirm a receipt and advise that we will be on schedule. I must see how our precious patient is. You've made yourself at home, Lieutenant. Just making a record of some drugs I'll need from the hospital. Good. And what about the other drawers? They're unimportant. They're not locked. This one is. Latitude 45 degrees, 55 minutes north. Longitude 32 degrees, 15 minutes west. Citadel. Panama, owner, Far East Trading Company. Looks like a million dollar parley. Von Mulder delivers you to them, and they take you the rest of the way. Well, now that you know, what can you do? I'll be going a short though, Garner. I might have a chance. You will be watched every inch of the way. One chance remain now. I realized that was pretty slim. It was past midnight when Von Mulder surfaced the sub. He was sitting in the boat beside me. I was hoping against hope he'd let me go alone to the hospital. It was a dark night. The port of Belgrano looked deserted, or at least fast asleep. I know the way to the hospital. Yes? So do I. All right. Take his other arm. Buenas noches. Buenas noches, señores. De qué se trata? Oh, se quebró una pierna, pobre hombre. El cuarto de emergencia está... We would like to treat him in the pharmacy. Open it up. Take what you want, Lieutenant.
No time for nerves. There's another bottle. Ensure his silence. Let's go, Lieutenant. I suppose you have everything you need, Lieutenant. Everything. Thank you, Captain. A useful visit, wouldn't you say? Very. All in all, it should have good results. I'm sure it will. So am I. Into the boat, please. After. Well, Lieutenant, we had a good night's work. Definitely, Lieutenant. Got it? Thank you. I believe this belongs to you. I've been watching you ever since you became so intrigued with our radio, Dr. Young. Or is it Lieutenant Young? Or is it both? Well, it doesn't matter what your name or rank is now. They'll never know where you are. Kramer? Yes, Captain. Place Lieutenant Young under guard in the forward torpedo room. Super fail. Gather you're somewhat surprised. This little incident will make no difference in my plans. Am I correct in assuming that you are regretting a lost opportunity? Had you known that Dr. Young was a spy, you might have made use of his rather bungling services. You're quite correct. I would have. Now that that last chance is gone, feeble though it might have been, you will learn to know the truth of what I told you. You had better realize, Madeline, that I am your only friend. When Von Mulder surfaced the U-64 again, I had the feeling that everything was lost. The stars were being shot to confirm the position. And I knew that the time for the rendezvous with the Citadel was close at hand. Plane! Bang 045, elevation 5, closing. Clear the bridge. Guys, guys. Spotted off Port Wing. She's going under. Get out a position report to base, Ted. Come with me. the last dive that affected him. It's his heart. Captain! Yes? The plane's been sighted again. It's a PBM.
Why didn't you tell me who you are? Why should I? If I'd only known, I... I might have been able to help. Changing your allegiance? Why don't you like Von Mulder as much as you expected to? I'm not trying to justify myself to you. But whether you believe it or not, I... I'm trying to undo the harm I did. It's a little late. Isn't there anything I can do? Anything at all? It's not for my sake. It's for his. There are some emergency flares on the port side of the control room. Yes. They're labeled NR. NR? You can pull the lever on the left side if you get a chance. She will. She can. Well, how is our patient? Oh, if you're thinking of any help from that search plane, it has gone for good. Now we can devote all our attention to Dr. Gurnitz. Commodore, we're on station. Okay. Hello, Atlantic Fleet Headquarters. This is Hunter Killer Group 7 reporting on station. Search plane report received, and we are continuing the search in accordance with your operations planned. Out. Okay, Phil, I'll take over. No contacts. All quiet, man. Wait, I think I got something, man. Sonar bridge, contact, bearing 275, range 3000. Aye, aye. Commodore, we have a sonar contact, bearing 275, range 3000. Switch your filters, maybe you'll get a better echo. The echo's weak and scattered. Sounds like another school of fish. Sonar bridge, lost contact due to weak echo. It's all yours, Matt. Commodore, we've lost contact again. I'm beginning to doubt if there's a submarine out there. Oh, there's one out there, all right. But we have to find out where. Will batteries be charged at the usual time tonight? Yes. We will service at 2100. Sound has contact. Propeller beats. Break ship for silent running. Two ships, possibly three. Battle stations! Battle stations! Up first, approximate bearing 060. Good. Three destroyers in line of bearing. They are passing by. Down periscope. With the whole ocean to sweep, they won't be coming back. We will maintain our position here, hovering, dead in the water, until they are out of sight. And then Destroyers, Twining and Weatherburnt, submarine flare bearing 170, execute Hunter Killer pattern, over. Break ship for depth charge. Break ship for depth charge. Uh, negative. 
Call ahead emergency. Right for order. Yes, yes, that's right. Take it down to 150 feet. Hard tide, 20 degrees down angle. Raw negative. Security here. All ships prepare depth charges. Set full pattern. Good. Fritz, take her to the forward torpedo room. Yes, Captain. Bearing 210. Twining and weather burns. Emergency. Three turn. Emergency. Three turn. I'm going to try to blow him to the surface. Don't sink him. Aye, aye, sir. Left standard rudder. Left standard rudder. Set shallow depth charge pattern. Shallow depth charge pattern. Aye, aye, sir. Depth charge pattern. High pressure airline ruptured in forward torpedo room. Secure high pressure air forward. Kramer. Investigate the damage. Yes, Surface. That's what they want us to do. They want guns alive. Jackets cling on everything and bring it forward. Then go back to the control room and stand by to release 100 gallons of oil for an oil slick. Yes. Prayer number one torpedo tube for releasing footables. Waste number two on trim line for releasing oil slick.
tow tops ready. Stand by. Fire! Change speed to dead slow. Change speed to dead slow. Commodore, there's a wreckage. I'm afraid we've sunk it. Maybe we have and maybe we haven't. That could be an old U-boat trick from the last war. We'll continue the search. Our trick has worked, Captain. Has it? How do you know? They stopped dropping death charges. Can't do it. They can't do what? Go deeper. She's an old ship. It's been six years since overhaul. Continue hard dive. What can we gain by going deeper? Locate a thermal layer and get beneath it. 170 feet. Continue dive. A beam of the destroyer sonar will not penetrate a layer of colder water. You should know that. How do you know we'll find a layer of colder water? 190 feet. Go deeper. Who the devil says there's a thermal layer at all? 210 feet. Deeper. It's our only chance. It's madness. Oh, yes, Captain. Report any rapid drop in sea temperature. Control! Control! Water entering the forward torpedo room for the windless packing glands. But the forward torpedo room build is on the train line. Continue dive. Captain, get down 300 feet. She won't stand any more pressure. Take it out to four and... The hatch is sprung in the crew's quarters. Compartment is flooding. There's the drain pump. And in the compartment. Secure you know, water tight door aft. Control room. No safety. Four and five main ballast tanks. Slowly. Control room. With no safety. 400 feet. And still no change in temperature. Continue dive. We have got to serve us. It's our only chance. Tell the maneuvering room to pull all power and lighting to the aft battery. You're mad! You kill us all! You... I'm the last man, Captain. Good. Get out! Captain! Sea temperature falling! Rapidly! Level off. We are under the layer. Maintain present depth until we clear the area. All ahead full. Left full rudder. New course. Zero. 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 We're losing contact. Keep searching the area. Aye, aye, sir. No. 
Marsh. Journey, Doctor. Yes. Captain Derry, Captain von Meuter. I was advised I was receiving only one passenger. I'm sure you will not mind two more. Your superiors will appreciate them. He's an American undercover agent. She, unfortunately, shares his views. They are most welcome aboard. This contains the exact details. This is Dr. Adolf Gernitz. Now my part of the transaction is complete. You are a very thorough man, Captain. And this completes our part of the transaction. I am sure you will find everything in order. If you don't mind, I prefer to verify it for myself. As I watched Von Mulder open the thick bundle, I had the feeling of revulsion. This was the payoff, the blood money for the delivery of Dr. Gurnitz into the hands of a potential enemy. It was when I noticed the expression on Von Mulder's face that I looked at the contents of the bundle. When I saw that marked life preserver, I knew I hadn't failed. That the Navy hadn't failed. Very ingenious, Lieutenant. The lessons are all right. My good man, my Lieutenant has his torpedo instructions. If I'm not safely back aboard the U-64 within 10 minutes, he will carry them out. He's already swinging the boat into firing position. Eight and a half minutes. Shall I give the order to make ready the torpedo tubes? No. But Lieutenant... Wait! Only four minutes left, sir. Commodore. We'll stand fast. All of us. Make ready number three torpedo tube. Make ready number three torpedo tube. Make ready number three torpedo tube. Number three tube, ready.
the machine gun stop sign. But there's some time. Clear the bridge. Thank you, Dr. Young. The facts are interesting, revealing, and I must add, somewhat prejudiced. I won't deny that. Would you deny that Miss Brenner, by decommissioning the yacht's radio, committed an overt act which led to murder and to the abduction of a scientist wanted by a foreign power? No, I wouldn't. But I think you're overlooking one point. Using Miss Brenner and abducting her was the biggest mistake Von Mulder made. For instance, Miss Brenner did commit the one overt act which led to the discovery and the sinking of the U-64, setting off the emergency flares at the risk of her life. Uh, Paul, bring Miss Brenner in. Miss Brenner, please. Yes? I'm sorry to detain you, Miss Brenner. You mean I... Yes, you're free to go. Thank you. Thank you. 